Uh, okay, perfect. So, just start by introducing yourself and your name and where you're from. What tribe are you from? Okay. Forgive me, Jaganashi Moen. My English name is Tanya Abed, and I come from a little village called East Lake in Minnesota. Um, I'm on day 24 of a hunger strike for fresh, clean water. And in essence, what I'm talking about, you know, the Dakota Access Pipeline is only just the tip of a, the iceberg of what is what I am really here for. I heard the youth when they came out, when they put out the calling. I've even uh, got to meet and greet with some of the youth that did do the run to Washington, D.C., and that's been awesome. And for all of you out there who are on this hunger strike with me, thank you so much for putting your effort into uh, the prayers that we have going on out here. Uh, the main thing that we want to see is to people, for people and um, um, companies to be able to divest into green energy, meaning wind, solar, however green it's going to be, that it's going to be eco-friendly in that, and that's what um, what I am here for. Mm -hmm. um, so, so quick question, so so why why eating? So like, why not like, you know, some people go and, and go make a sign and go and like protest, like, or some people like, you know, they like to, you know, inform of their of their position in different ways. So why do you do you chose to not eat? It's a nonviolent direct action, and I've been um, going up against these companies like say like Enbridge since 2011, and even gone down to the governor's office and asking him don't no more pipelines. And mm -hmm. Governor Dayton back in Minnesota, he wants to be recognized as the uh, clean water governor, and when he wants to put pipelines through in Minnesota, you know that's only going to damage our waters even more. Mm. Um, and since I've been going up get up against Enbridge and you know, getting their information and the things that they have told me at open houses, public hearings, um, even down to the state hearings and things like that, being there and being present and hearing what they got to say, that's like, oh my God. So then when the youth put the calling out over here, and I came out here and I visited with them. I could hear, or not hear, but I could feel that urgency of why they wanted to stop this pipeline from going through. Mm -hmm. Because if we take a look at it, once when this pipeline breaks over here, it's going to hit Cannonball within three minutes. Within 15 minutes, it's going to hit Fort Yates. Within 30 minutes, it's going to hit the Ogala um, waterway down that way. And who's to say how much it's going to hit further? the 18 million people down river mm -hmm. you know that's why I'm here I also have um, family I have a brother-in-law whose family comes from this reservation and I have nieces and nephews should they come back one day or even with their grandchildren if they should want to come back one day they need to have fresh clean water not only for the people here but for all our people that come through here as at one time as it was a trade route and my family, I do have nephews and nieces that come from the Oglala territories down that way. And mm -hmm. sure enough, I want them to have fresh, clean water and their great-grandchildren down the line. Mm -hmm. So that's the forward thinking that I'm having mm -hmm. as far as how this hunger strike is going. So how do you feel so far in these 24 days of, like, not having meals? And, and how, how, how did it change your way of that you look at, you know, at food? Because a lot of people don't understand that when people... Uh, you know, as indigenous people with a ceremony, like Sundance, you know, we fast and do things like that. Um, um, to I me, okay, I guess I've had, people ask me if I've had training for this, and I tell them, no, I haven't had training. But then I take a look at it, and it goes back to uh, the ceremonial ways of um, my people back home, how we've been able to um, go without the food when we need to, and to be able to understand that when we do um participate in cooking the food like that we don't automatically start tasting it if it's all right like that but because we know how much love that we put into the food that's what's going to be able to be presented to the people knowing that it's going to be good mm -hmm. and for me myself knowing that knowing the things that I'm doing as far as this hunger strike goes with the food not taking in 
in the food. That's just part of the ceremonial part for me to understand, to really get in touch with again. And then the flip side of that, um, I was over at the casino one night, and this lady, she ordered a steak, and she had it right next to me, and oh my God, did it smell good. Mmm. You just wanted it, huh? And then as she was cutting into it, I don't know, you can smell the uh, regular t um, cooking of the, um, how it's done and stuff like that, but then there was also kind of like a different kind of smell that emitted from it, and I just can't put my finger on what that smell was because it was totally different than what you would normally, you know, be delicious. Ooh, okay, mm -hmm. but it was something, I don't know, it kind of turned me off. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> are, you, are you drinking water? Yes, I am. Yeah? I'm drinking water, and I'm also doing... I'm not doing this um, without full knowledge of how the health risks and everything like that. Mm -hmm. So I've been on water, protein drinks, um, mineral teas, multivitamins, iron and magnesium. So I've got a pretty good crew of medics here, right down to the nurses and the doctors here, who have been helping me um, stay stay healthy mm -hmm. and also I've also been doing like a seaweed and algae mix also they call it green food mm -hmm. which is really good uh, once you get past the smell <laughs> 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 but it tastes really delicious though yeah mm -hmm. so are you are you planning on staying on this on this fast hunger strike for I've however found... long it takes yeah for however long it takes because we don't need to poison our waters anymore Look at the Gold King Mine, look at Kalamazoo, Michigan, look at Point, Michigan, look at Montana, that go, um, that spill that they had there. You know, what's going to happen then? What's going to happen for our futures? And then they want to do uh, uh, that uranium mining over at Oak Flats and then take off the top of Mauna Kea, what, to search for other planets to mm -hmm. destroy? You know, we don't need that. We got our Earth right here that we need to protect. And that's something that... Um, I remember growing up as a child hearing that, well, the Creator's laws are these, and, and it was spelled out like that through oral history. And then I ran into the Declaration of Indigenous Rights, and what was presented in the Declaration of Indigenous Rights was what those Creator's laws were spelled out for us. And sorry to say that we had to put it down on paper so that other people could be able to recognize those things on these lands north and south america for these lands that's what's spelled out for us here mm -hmm. so that's why i have such a deep root into why we need to protect what we have here mm. and do you as a woman you know to be able to to do this for you know not just for yourself but for mother earth can you tell me a little bit about that connection that you have with the earth as, as, as a woman you know and and how we you know it is, it's our mother and as indigenous people we see that as our mother uh, how, do, how does that make you feel? Well, if you, know, you take well, if you take a look at how how you would treat your mom, um, would you treat her like uh, in an abusive way? Would you go over there and pull her hair, and, or try to beat her down, or anything like that, or try to gouge her out? Well, if you take a look at that, and then take a look at what we're doing to the earth, that is basically the same thing. It is the same thing that, of what's happening here. You know, we see all these fresh lines in the ground over here where that pipeline is going in. You know, does she really need that? You know, at any time it could go boom and then all of a sudden there's oil and tar sands. Of, of all things, tar sands, you know, that's going to decimate what we have going on here. And especially the food that we pull out of the rivers and things like that. Mm. You know, when we ingest that, what's going to happen then? Hmm. How do we adapt to that with more cancers, more diabetes, more more of everything that's going on? And you, you've been here a while, right? Like, you've been back and forth. I've been coming back and forth here since April, uh, second or third week of April. And then I've been able to set things up at home so I could be out here continuously since August. Hmm. And and since why, why, why do you chose to come back every time? There's always this calling. It's like a strong calling you. I don't even know how to explain it. And I've asked other people to explain it themselves, and they're like, I don't know. It's just that, how would you say those heartstrings, you know, they got those little heartstrings, and it's like, no matter where you go, it's always there and it pulls you back. Well, this is that place that's like that, and you can feel that healing that's coming from the ground. I don't know in what way or how it does, but I've seen a lot of people come through here, 
and they may have had drug or alcohol addictions and they've been able to overcome them and to be able to learn how to deal with it and then we've also had people who've had um, like say with some of the military they've been able to help get help with that PTSD stuff going on and I don't know how else to explain it just for some people it's the prayers do work for them no matter what kind of ailing things that are going on within them mm -hmm. so for somebody that that is not indigenous somebody that might have different you know ways of looking at what has happened here at Standing Rock and this movement like what how would you how would you invite them to to understand this movement how would I invite them to understand what would you tell them okay well we could go the scientific route and we can have the top most the utmost respected scientific people in the world to give us the data and still these corporations do not want to listen to that you can do the research behind these like the energy transfer partners like Enbridge and like the Dakota Access Pipelines or, or whatever name that they give it because it's basically one and the only almost the only pipeline carriers around and then if we take a look at the um, oil rigging part of it uh, let's say um, about a month ago there was 38 rigs that were up and running by July of this year they want 50 rigs up and running by July by 2019 they want over 1200 rigs up and running so that they can fulfill 1.4 million barrels a day and right mm -hmm. now they can't even do that and what was it a nine percent drop in December for the for the not pumping out as much oil and then they blamed it on the weather so if we can if you want to do your research like I have asked these people I've been still waiting for Enbridge to email back my answers to me but they still haven't gotten back to me yet mm -hmm. and I asked for uh, for the numbers which essentially meant the environmental impact statement because when these pipelines do break are they going to be able to bring those numbers back up to those safe standards what they had before mm -hmm. they wanted to put these pipelines in so to me I did a, quite a bit of research did all the reading uh, material what I could and then to try to ask questions to go specifically to that site and not being able to get answers question because you needed a different password or be a shareholder or mm -hmm. whatever so, so well, if you can be able to do that that's great do you think that people that um, that support the pipeline um, how, how would you like how would you bring them to how can I say this like how what would you tell them to, to do uh, in the sense of like you know a lot of times we have to uni unify right we have to come together instead of like separating you know ourselves from us versus them so for you and you know, as an indigenous woman that has you know been here and is doing this this you know hunger strike this fasting you know what comes from your heart what would be the most positive thing you can tell those people that support the pipeline we pray for you too we pray for your children we pray for your grandchildren we even pray for the ones that have yet to be born for you yet because they too deserve fresh clean water and just think about you know when these pipelines break is it going to be at your hands where you welded that area or where you dug up that area is that going to be coming back to haunt you you know just ask yourself you know this all could have been prevented with you know by listening to the people and listening to the generations that are yet to come you know for fresh clean water so that's all that I can say is that we keep praying for you too so that you can be able to see what's going on what really is going on in the world don't be a part of the shady deal that these governments had you know to force your hand to be able to go against what what the Creator has spelled out for us Mm, perfect. And then last one last thing. You can say no, that's completely okay. Um, can you sing a song to the people? If it's okay, you don't you don't have to, but if you do I'm that from Minnesota, got no one to call my own. So I come here looking for you. I, uh, if you be my honey, I will be your sugar pie. Mini we Johnny We love you Ni Mama a King Unti Maka We love you Awesome Thank you